Hey everyone, as you can tell from the title of the episode, what we're going to be talking about today is following the plan over your mood. Honestly, I'm going to just jump right into the episode because there's so much I want to go over. Because with last week's episode, when I was talking about personal development inward and outward, that was just the surface level of what happened in my quarter three and how I'm intending to wrap it up as we speak. By time this episode comes out, it will most likely be fall. Fall starts September 22nd this year, and I think this episode will be coming out the 23rd, so it still gives time to start planning, start getting things together for the season. I feel like even though I'm recording this on September 4th, it's still the perfect time to talk about these things because fall is all about change it's all about slowing down and i when i think of fall i think of like wholesome celebrations so preparing for quarter four or year four however you want to describe it that's all we're going to be discussing in this episode so get a notebook if you want these are the steps i'm taking to prepare for it i wanted to kind of create an easy breakdown guide So the first step is reflecting on the past years slash past quarters. And the reason I describe it this way is because I'm personally checking in on myself using the 12 week year. And the other day, I actually ended up doing a full reflection in my journal about it. Personally, I feel like when I make it into a chart or a quadrant table, it helps me visually put things to pieces. So I did that and I broke it down. So I just said what I learned in 2024. I labeled like the four parts. So year one, January, February, March, year two, April, May, June, year three, July, August, September. And obviously year four is supposed to be October, November, December but there's nothing in that quadrant. So I'm just going to talk about the themes. And that's what I really put in my table. So I said like the themes that happen the most in these times of the year. So year one, it was discipline, burnout, and then resting and bouncing back. The reason why it started this way is because if you were watching my YouTube channel, for example, you'll see like in November, December, I was like really sick in November and it carried on through December, but I also decided I wanted to change my life and take my health seriously. So then January comes around, I am doing my best to be the most self-disciplined version of myself. Because it was something so new to me and how I went about it just wasn't as sustainable, by February, I was burnt out. February this year was probably one of my saddest months, but at the same time, I didn't know why. I just felt sad and heavy, and I felt like there was nothing really going on, but everything was like more internally, and I was just feeling a lot of emotions, which I let myself feel that burnout, and by March... I was learning how to deal with burnout, having more of a direction than I did. There was a period of sadness, frustration, but March was like that month where I was like looking at my options. March was when I was creating different five-year plans and honestly reflecting on lifestyle design, like how do I want to design my life? what would make my life feel fulfilled, you know? Like, how would I find my purpose? What are my options? And the type of material I use during that time is probably in videos, but I digress at that point. With year two, April, May, June, that time was very well planned. And I was a lot more observational at that time because of the work I was doing in March. So into year two, it was like structured, but it felt a lot kinder than the first year went. And what my focus at those times was connection, 
planning and challenging like when I say challenging I mean challenging myself looking for ways to push myself out of my comfort zone planning different ways I want to move forward connection was something I really wanted to prioritize because I felt that I was being very isolated and I was getting very much in my head about my development because there was nothing else and no one else really for me to focus on at that point of time. And I think that was the huge point of sadness in February because that's what I was trying to mention in the last episode. It is so easy to get hyper fixated when you're determined to work on yourself and work on your goals because the focus is you. But then the way when you focus on something, you can see the good, but you can also see the bad. And if your head is in a very comparison mindset, and especially when people say like, oh, this is how you get your life together in 12 weeks. Like, this is how you get your life together in six months. It's like you get in your head about progress and the timeline. And that's really why in my content, like later on in this year, I was really talking about timelines because as a young 20 something year old, that was the pressure point for me. Like you have people constantly asking you like, oh, are you in a relationship? Oh, are you, did you get a job? What type of job do you have now? They ask you all these questions and then I feel pressure of like, am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I on the right path? Why don't I know how to do this thing? Or why am I struggling to adjust to changes? That's when year two, it just felt so much better, which caused a different type of flow in year three. In year three, there was a lot happening. So my mom got her surgery in July. And that was one particular way I was being more of service because I was mostly helping her through her recovery. Then, because that's when I also was starting volunteering for the summer. So being of service, I talked about last episode, like the difference it made to me and how my emotional state was affected and how I wasn't as fixated on certain things. Like those months were hard. But like not hard for what people would expect them to be. Because yes, I still was in my head about like where I'm at career wise. But I was also going through the idea of things between me and another person actually being over. And then also because part of my dream someday, I think as of right now is still someday I think I still want to be a mother but obviously I still think that is under like if I'm in if I'm stable like mentally stable emotionally stable financially stable like I feel like if I'm not those things then that's a different story but I intend to get to that point to be those things but it also kind of highlighted that I don't necessarily know how to nurture because for example with my mom it was always like a hard thing because she's like she said her appetite changed after the surgery and she was like I can't even think about what I want to eat and I'm like I wish I could tell you but we don't eat the same and we have different goals when it comes to food so even though like obviously she's my mom because culturally she grew up in Jamaica until she was 16 and I grew up here so her preferred food is the food she grew up with but then at the other point of it she is trying to be a lot healthier which I don't necessarily want to get too into since it's not really about me but the point is she wanted me to be more I guess assertive since I was the one that would be cooking the meals and like doing the cleaning. So doing all the house chores and then helping her with 
her exercises. She wanted me to pay attention when the physical therapist came around and just like different things. So it was a huge adjustment for both of us because since it's always been a small family, you know, everyone kind of always did their own thing in terms of cooking too. Like I know some people cook for their families or cook for everyone in the household. And yeah, we do cook, but for the most part, since we have such different tastes, it's more like I cook for me, she cooks for her. We uh, still make enough so if the other person wants some, like they can take some obviously, but it's not necessarily cooking for everyone. Right now I'm trying to primarily eat like turkey and chicken, right? I don't know if that's a good idea but for a different reason. But my mom, she hates turkey. I don't mind it. So that's like, so it's like I would have to cook for myself and her because we have such different diets. And then sometimes she would say like, I want this, but now it's so salty now. So, and then I would feel bad because I feel like I'm not being enough of a help. And then in my head, I'm like, how am I ever gonna mature into a proper adult who has kids, who has a family? And then I started spiraling over that because I felt like I didn't know how to do those things. And it was more like a very humbling experience because it showed like which areas I would like to develop in more. Because obviously I know how to take care of me, but even if you know how to take care of yourself, sometimes if you want to, obviously, because not everyone wants kids. Sometimes taking care of you is so different than taking care of other people. And even if it's not kids, sometimes it's like a relative you're close to, whether it's like a parent, like some of us have older parents. And learning how to be nurturing in that way and there for people in that way was humbling. And then on top of that, I was just... I was going through something with someone who was a huge part of my life and now they're not going to be and kind of grieving that idea of what I thought our future would look like and the things I wanted. So kind of healing from that was like year three. And it's a complicated story, but that's what I was like emotionally processing. So some days I would be like, fine, or like, you know, doing what I am doing to try to like mature and increase my responsibilities and kind of learn how to be of service while still managing like my own health. So I was actually more focused on nutrition while the other two years, I think I heavily leaned towards uh, learning how to want to be physically active with like exercise. So that was the difference. And I know this is a lot of rambling and I know this part is probably really long, but that's part of the reflection part. If you're going to go into quarter four strong and make a strong plan, having awareness over what lessons you learned, the emotions you felt, having understanding and acknowledging the growth even when some things were hard or just honestly terrible to experience but also remembering like the good parts about it and things like you want to carry on with you regardless of everything one good thing that came out of year three is i have a stronger bond with my mom year two i learned what physical activities like what patterns work the best for me. I was working out daily. It made me be able to simplify something like what fitness regimen works best for me. And I was also centered on my creativity. So that was another good thing that came out of year two. And with year one, it kind of was like this reminder of the goal should always be to be as sustainable as possible. And mistakes were made, of course, but I could have appreciated that time for the rest I had and learning like to balance that. There were great moments that came out of year one, not as much socially, but 
it was a good time to be by myself. And then year two and obviously three, those were much more social times. I hung out more, especially in May. And then obviously year three, it was kind of like dedicated to helping people and learning how to help people, which is very important to me because even though, yes, personal development is important, but being all around a good character and having a good character, having a good personality is also part of personal development, which I don't think is talked about enough. But anyways, moving on to the next step. All right, so step two is choose three goals to focus on. The reason why three is the perfect number because sometimes we try to take on too much and too much change. When it comes to me, a lot of my goals centered around like my content creation, for example, So I had goals for that, goals for my health, and then goals for something that was very important for me at that time. So it's either like, for example, social connections or career. So basically either or. And once you choose those three, then the very next step is to develop strategies for each one because then there are different ways you can go about it. I think this goes back to the first one of your reflections. So you can see what you need with the different ideas. Like you can come up with different strategies and diversitize it. Have some strategies that involve just needing you. Have some strategies that may involve another person. Like I know for me ending this time year, a big goal for me before we hit quarter four is for me to find a therapist because I feel like when I first did therapy I was in high school so the reason for my therapy was mostly because I was in a bad environment in terms of like schooling like the school itself was good like it had smart people but in terms of how it made me feel and like the social aspect of it that's where I felt horrible all the time and I was dealing with things like bullying and harassment and that kind of affected my thoughts how I saw myself and I felt so anxious every time I had to go to that place even from when I started middle school it was I would throw up every morning and it wouldn't be like on purpose it would be because I was so nervous every single time that I had to get up and leave the house and then after that because I knew like going to school made me feel physically sick then I would be afraid to eat throughout the day like I would be afraid to have breakfast at all sometimes I would like pick at stuff at lunch but I would never have like a full meal at school I would always like wait until the end of day and a lot of times my friends and I would like go to Duncan so me and my friends mostly hung out in 10th grade so so I would say 2016 2017 was like the core time of us hanging out but that's besides the point I want a therapist now to kind of help me adjust to the change and also hold me accountable and also someone to help me I guess practice my social skills because like I said my environment kind of caused that rift and the thing is I couldn't appreciate therapy at that time because I was still in the situation so now I'm out of the situation obviously like years passed and I'm a completely well I'm not gonna say a completely different person now because I do think I still have traits but I still have some influence of my personality was conditioned to be more introverted and socially anxious and kind of awkward but that doesn't serve me and that's not who I want to be so I want someone to work with me with how I want to develop my personality It's also recognizing like you don't have to do everything by yourself and that's why I wanted to practice connection so hard because I want to 
I guess, get used to not having, because I'm a stubborn person. I hate asking for help. It's difficult for me to ask for help because it feels like I judge myself harder because I'm like, I should know this. I should know how to do this, even though it's something I've never done. But that's just how I feel because I'm like, other people are doing it. It seems like they understand well and I'm comparing myself, which then sucks. Developing strategies and like a variation of the ways you can go about it is the next step. So then after that, after you have your strategies, think about how you're gonna set up your check-ins and reflections and how often is it realistic for you to do it. Lately, I've been journaling like almost every day since August because I kind of want to fully commit to the shift because I felt it, I was like, I'm, I really need to check in again. But besides that, I think I'm continuing with my 12-week year check-in system along with like me mixing it with spirituality. So like I do reflections based on the moon phases and stuff like that more so because this feels more personal to me. So you can set it up. I personally go between doing things on paper like my journal is obviously handwritten, but it's different than how I set up my Notion. Whereas Notion, it's like I create a template that makes sense for me to organize my thoughts. Journaling is more like a free flow. But my favorite phase, Notion sets the plans in motion. And then number five is solidifying a new phase. And there's so many ways people can go about this. I like when I change my hair, get my eyebrows done, get my nails done. I don't usually buy new clothes, but if I do... It just, that solidifies me being in a new phase. And the reason why I wanted to add this in is obviously I know this could get expensive. So you don't have to do it in that way. You can also solidify it by like throwing yourself a little celebration. You can burn a candle. You can write a letter, like a huge letter. You can do whatever you want to that's personal to you. I just personally prefer like a new look because then when I take pictures, when I like make videos, I know exactly what era I was in, you know, like I could physically know, I could physically feel the new vibes and those type of things energize me. It's a two each their own type of thing. But obviously the last step, step six is gather your resources. So look up the contacts, look up the books, look up the podcast you need to hold you through and keep up with creators that motivate you and make you feel like, yes, you can do this. All those things are important because when you gather your resources, you're creating an atmosphere for yourself, for you, your goals, and how you're going to plan to follow through. Because on the days where you don't feel like it, maybe the content creator you like, you pursue, like does content and does like, are you really gonna start over? Like whatever motivates you, find the creators that motivate you, find the podcast that will motivate you, find the YouTubers that will motivate you, create an atmosphere and a personal atmosphere for when you want to not do it that it gets you up, it gets you going, and it keeps you accountable in a sense. So that is all for today. My voice is hurting. I'm drinking black tea with honey to kind of soothe it because sometimes when I talk too long, my throat just gets vocal fry very often. And so let's just get into the card pull of the episode. I only used one deck this time. And of course, what I'm grateful for is going to be towards the end. So I use the Wild Unknown Pocket Animal Spirit by Kim Kranz. And the card I pulled was Peacock. Inner beauty, compassion, a simulator of anything. The beauty of the peacock is unrivaled. It's so easy to think it comes from the plumage. But the secret of the peacock is that... The beauty resides within and extends outward indefinitely. This adept creature 
can assimilate or digest all experiences in life so it does not harbor resentment, conflict, or past pain within its psyche. The peacock type is extremely rare. Not many of us have reached this advanced level of acceptance of the self and others. When in balance, confident, kind. When out of balance, can't digest situations. To bring into balance, meditation on navel. So I think obviously this connects because this episode was mainly, yes, like a follow a plan type episode. But as you can tell from the part that's the longest is most likely talking about digesting what you learned so far in the year and I went in depth with my own personal experience so far because I don't mind to. I think the ability to take in situations, take in the hard emotions, take in everything so you don't have resentment towards life and to practice a life full of gratitude, of accepting the hard lessons, to kind of take it as Yeah, it did hurt to experience some things, but also believe everything is within your favor that is going to do good somewhere along the lines, even if the experience hurt now. And the most important thing is to take in life all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, like take it all in. As for what I'm grateful for, Honestly, I am grateful for my mom and how she is recovering now because as much as I loved helping her and love learning how to be more nurturing, I felt a struggle between trying to balance creating, looking for jobs, doing the underlying things to look for jobs like reviewing my resume, connecting with people, Everything just felt like a lot. And between everything, some things felt short. But I also know it was a hard adjustment for her as well because she's so used to her doing her things her way. And she told me how she did not like to rely on anyone. And I gotta admit, I am my mother's daughter, so... But being able to learn how to nurture. So I'm just overall thankful for that time. I also felt like it brought us a closer bond. And I'm also grateful to see her heal and see her try and get out of her comfort zone and trying. And her trying makes me want to try more. So that's why this time I'm going in to my plans a lot more ambitiously a lot more like headstrong but not in the way I did in January where I was trying to do everything change everything in formats I just wasn't used to so yeah I hope you enjoyed this episode I hope you can find something to take out of this episode because I know that I don't like centering episodes around just like my life I would prefer to give advice but I hope you take things from the story take lessons from the story and feel more connected to do your own plans you know but anyways have a good day evening or night I appreciate everyone who listens and if you're on YouTube you know the drill like comment subscribe if you'd like and i will see you in the next one okay bye